Hello and welcome back to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. I hope you're all doing well and looking forward to watching me struggle a little bit with this painting here. I often start off my days in the studio by trying something a little bit different, something that I haven't painted before. And I wanted to try this kind of complex sky that you can see here in this painting. It's another Scottish scene, so I've got the mountains in the background, a loch or lake running across the whole scene, and just some sort of scrubby something and nothing grass in the foreground. I wanted a fairly atmospheric sky with the look of a sort of storm blowing in across the mountains because a couple of the mountains are lost in the mist in the far distance. But as it was, painting the scene wet in wet, I went in much too dark with my sky top left and I was hoping that the paint grey would dry back a lot more than it did but it didn't so at the end of the painting I have to balance up my painting um, with a lot more darks across the mountain in order to compensate for this. I've put this whole painting onto a time lapse for you because it could be quite tedious watching the whole process um, because there was quite a lot of stopping and starting and thinking and trying to work out what to do. But to be honest, that is mostly how things work out in the studio when I'm painting. It is that kind of a process of just trying to sort of uh, see how things are going um, what's going according to plan, what isn't, what I can do with it. So it's having a sort of flexible approach as well as sort of knowing roughly what I'm doing and having a plan. I need to be able to deviate from the plan if watercolour decides to be a bit wayward. The colours that I'm using as I paint the first layer wet in wet is Payne's Grey with a bit of ultramarine blue for the sky. I'll be using um, Sap Green raw sienna, burnt sienna um, for the foreground with maybe a little bit of sepia as well. So you can see that I'm using a little bit of clean paper tissue or paper towel to very lightly dab out a few clouds. This is giving me some soft and hard edges along with the diffused soft and hard edges from the washes themselves. I've brought the sky wash over the mountains because they're going to be darker than the sky eventually and that helps to keep the tonal values nice and harmonious. Now I can go in with my um, one and a half inch Mottler wash brush and start painting in some of the sort of grassy parts of the mountains below and some of the rest of the landscape with my sap green, raw sienna, burnt sienna, maybe a bit of Payne's grey here and there.
I can use my palette knife to scrape through the rich paint just to start off a few sort of rough, tangled, grassy textures, bracken, that sort of thing in the foreground, something and nothing. The first layer, the wet in wet layer, is now dry and I've mixed up a nice dark value of Payne's Grey with some alizarin crimson, ultramarine and a bit of burnt sienna added to it to make up this sort of dark mountain colour. So I'm going to start putting in the mountains. I'm using a size 14 Skoda Perla for the mountains. Um, it's a round brush with a really good point. So it's equally good for large sweeping brush strokes as it is for detail. And here I'm putting in one of the distant mountains. You can see that I've left um, a little gap below the dark top of the mountain and that would just give me the impression of mist. So now painting the midground, warming the colour up with a sort of sap green and burnt sienna mix. And I'm painting, of course, wet onto the dry painting at the moment, so I'm getting nice crisp marks. And that means that I can get some of my darks into the midground across the base of the little island and the back of the lock, and a few in the foreground too. While the paint is just damp, I can drag the palette knife through those distant mountains just to add 
just a hint of some texture. If anything looks too harsh, I can just smudge it with my finger. So just a little bit of work now on the foreground, just to bring some brighter, richer colour to the foreground, but without too much detail, and then some colour over the lock or lake. So that's the water painted in, although I'm thinking that it's looking a little bit scruffy at the moment, but I'll let it dry and see what happens. I'm trying to get a bit more tone over the mountains, but I'm still not sure about um, whether or not they're dark enough. I'm going to remove the tape because that helps me to see the painting with fresh eyes. It might look different once we've removed the tape and we see it with a clean white border. And this is what I often do if I get stuck with a painting. Um, then I can actually see the true scope of the tones. And yeah, that dark patch is way too dark. My mountains have dried back really light. So I think what I need to do is be brave and it's going to be a do or die. I also don't like the shape of um, that sort of long, low mountain in the midground. So I'm going to change the shape of that. And if I can make it look like the mountains um, are in cloud shadow, sort of the frontmost mountains, then I think that will help. But first I'm going to smooth out the water a bit more and stop it from looking quite so scrappy. I think I just want it to look a little bit cleaner. There's so much going on with the sky and the mountains that I think the lake and the foreground need to be quite simple in comparison. So I'm back with my size 14 round brush and the good point. I'm just going to modify the top of the mountains first with this dark colour and then try and bring the dark into these mountains and try and sort of match up this dark with the sky. There's nothing to lose here because I'm not happy with this painting as it is. And that's what often happens if you're not too happy with the painting, rather than just sort of leaving it aside. It's really good just to try out ideas on it because sometimes you can actually uh, try something out uh, which works and I do think that this solution here of matching the tone of the mountains to the dark to darkest tone in the sky really helps this painting to come together. You can already see now that that lovely dark is um, 
going into the mountain that it's just beginning to look a little bit more convincing. I mean, this is never going to be a wonderful painting. It is just an experiment, but I've learned a lot from it. One thing is not to take my eye off the sky. When I'm painting storms like this, I need to make sure that um, I spread the paint out where it's really dark. But now this darker colour coming into this mountain directly below that heavy cloud is really helping now to make it look like these um, strongly cast cloud shadows across that part of the mountains. I think this is a great example that shows how, how wrong a painting can look if the values are out of balance and if the tones are wrong. So even though this isn't a successful painting in my eyes, it's a successful exercise in learning how to balance tones and in sort of uh, playing around trying to sort of create a complex sky and also in trying to achieve depth and distance and the look of sunlight and shadows on a large, expansive landscape. I think a lot of people don't realise that most of what artists do in their studios is experiment and get things wrong just as often, if not more often, than they get things right. It's the only way that we learn. It's the only way that we can sort of come up with solutions to um, painting problems that we set ourselves is by sort of getting it wrong a few times. It's only by getting it wrong that we can get it right. And I know that the next time I tackle a scene like this, I shall certainly take what I've learned from this one into the next painting. So I hope you found this visit to my studio helpful. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And if you click on the bell icon, you'll be notified whenever we post a video. Well, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to all our patrons who support us on Patreon. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.